الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا كيبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I extend the Islamic salutations to you all, brothers and sisters, be ethnillah. This will be an explanation, hopefully, to the syllabus. Hopefully to the syllabus of the Shahada school. Um, for those of you who have not have been given an invite yet, please drop your e- um, your name. And if you are friends with Dr. Isnad, I am able to invite you into the private group. If you're not friends with Dara Isnad and you follow or like the Mahat Ibn Taymiyyah, then what you will have to do is you will have to look up Dara Isnad and befriend me or send me a request so that I can send you an invite to the private group. And by the way, brothers and sisters, this is a free program. All right. This is a free program. And it is not just for the new Shahada. It's not just for the new Shahada. It's for all Muslims. Okay. So if you drop your name or you befriend me or send me requests, I will invite you into it. There are some things I would like to discuss, hopefully, in explaining how the syllabus will work for this Shahada school. Okay? First and foremost, Allah Jalla wa'ala reminds us in the Quran, He says, Wallahu akhrajukum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَلَا بَصَارُ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ In the 16th chapter of the Quran known as Surah Al-Nahl, the B, Allah Jalla wa'ala said, It is He who have brought you forth from out the wombs of your mothers, not knowing anything. That your hal, your state, your condition was that you were juhal, you were ignorant. As a child, everyone can attest to this. A baby does not know anything. Unless what it is taught. He or she is taught. Okay. So Allah Jalla wa'ala, he says, he is the one who bring you forth out of your mothers. The wombs of your mothers without knowing anything. And he gives you these faculties so that you can learn. Such as Allah Jalla wa'ala gives you hearing. He gives you sight. And he gives you a heart. All right. And little do you give thanks. The ulama, they use this particular ayah. To remind us that we are born uh, not knowing anything and that we have to be taught. Okay? Why is I'm bringing this verse? It's important for us to understand that. Because the asu or the origin is that we do not know. And if we do not know, that means we need to be taught. Okay? Which removes the state of arrogance, removes the state of... Um, someone being conceited or someone thinking that they are at a certain level when they may not. Okay. Next. Allah Jalla wa'ala, He says, وَتَّقُوا you يُعَلِّمُكُمُ Allah. And Surah Baqarah, Allah Jalla wa'ala says, And fear Allah and He will instruct you. He will teach you. He will educate you. This ayat gives us an insight into the concept of emptying your cup. Brothers and sisters, when we come into Islam, that's the process. Taking the cup that is either halfway full or already full, when before coming into Islam, is that now we have to take that cup and empty it out completely in order to take in what is being taught to us from Islam. Okay? So Allah Jalla says, وَتَّقُوا يُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ Fear Allah Jalla wa'ala and He will teach you. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can instruct you correctly about your deen. Alright? And He sent the Prophet وسلم, His sunnah to make it clear. That's understood. The next thing, that when it comes to learning knowledge, there is no shyness to be displayed when seeking the information. The Prophet Sallallahu has made that specifically clear in the authenticated hadith that there is no haya, there is no shyness when it comes to asking questions pertaining to seeking knowledge. 
okay? There is no hayat. There's no room for that. So brothers and sisters, you don't have to feel like you're being on the spot if you were to participate in the Shahada school. You don't have to feel like you, that. well, that's not me. I mean, I've been Muslim 20 years. I, I don't need to know about the Shahada. You know, I, I, you don't have to feel that way. We are in a time period where we are just too cool for everything. We're too cool, and by us remaining too cool, we just box ourselves right out of the position because we're just too cool. I'm too cool to do this. I'm too cool to learn. I'm too cool to grab th grasp this. I'm too cool to understand this. Where being too cool is not going to be the answer. You're going to have to learn. And many of us, when we come into Islam, we do not learn properly. Be honest with yourself. When you come into Islam, I don't care how long you have Shahada. You have not learned in a systematic way with a structure according to a methodology and the proper way of beginning to study. Hopefully we covered this in this talk and the explanation of the syllabus to this particular course, the Shahada course, which is designed for that purpose. So Allah reminds us for those who want to be too cool. Allah reminds us in the Quran, in the 17th chapter of the Quran, Allah says, Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. Do not walk on the earth in conceit or arrogantly. Lan al ardal wal jibala. Because you can never penetrate the earth nor reach the mountains in height, as far as your stature, the mountains in height. So in other words, you can't do any, you can't penetrate the earth, right? You're not strong enough to penetrate the earth, nor can you reach in stature the, the height of the mountains. So there's no need for you to, to feel like you're just, I'm, you're that. You don't need to be that conceited. No, you need to learn. You need to learn. And the more you learn, the more humble you become. The more you realize, the more less you know. That's the, that's the process, okay? The only thing that Allah Jalla asks uh, or command the Prophet Muhammad to seek and increase, as the ulama has explained to us in the Quran, as in Surah Al-Taha, is only in ilm. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمَا الْآيَةِ And say, O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So we are in need of knowledge. طيب. The way that this course syllabus is set up, we try to set up like the ulama advise us. Sheikh Salih Fuzan Allah, he says that the bada'a bihadi al muqtasarat hi asas. He's going to tell us about the structure and beginning to study and acquire knowledge. He says that one begins with the summarized versions. Okay, the concise versions. Okay, in other words, he begins with the brief introductory level. Whether any science you're beginning to study, you don't start at the advanced level, you don't start at the intermediate level, you do not try to grasp everything all at one time, you do not bark, um, bite on more than you can chew. You understand? Even if you think you're highly intelligent enough to do it. No, because this is skipping a process. This is not solidifying or strengthening your foundation if you're all over the place. This is why you see the Prophet ﷺ reminding this noble Sahaba. He says, Ya Rasulullah, indeed I have the ability to read the Quran in seven days. The Prophet ﷺ told him, do not read it more than this. He says, I have the ability to read it more than that. He says, don't read it more than three days, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. And anyone who reads it more than three days, he does not have any faham of the Quran. This is important for us to grasp. He had the ability to read the Quran in three days. But why would the Prophet Sallallahu tell him not to do that? Because it's just not merely a book you're just reading. This is, infam this is knowledge. And knowledge should not be, you understand? And a person should not try to bungle up knowledge like that. You discredit it. It's too much information. It's too much knowledge details that you have to go over. And just because you can recite it from front to back does not give you the right to just, you understand, not respect that ilm. And we're not saying this about the noble companion. We're just saying the Prophet ﷺ instruct them not to read the Quran 
no uh, less than more than three days. Tayyip. Now, so Sheikh Sheikh Salih Fazana fi he says, you begin, yani, and look what he's saying. You begin with the brief, concise works. Because this is the asasu li talabil ilm. This is the foundation for the student of knowledge. The student of knowledge begins to build. This is the foundation for the student of knowledge. They begin to build upon something. What are you building upon? If you don't start with the preliminaries, the elementary, the fundamentals, then what are you building upon? He says, so the individual who is seeking knowledge should begin his studying and his learning little by little, step by step. Do you understand that? Don't pick up the biggest book. Read it and say, okay, I got it. You don't. I'd be hard pressed to find anyone who pick up the biggest book and said, okay, I read it and I got it. No, you don't. You have not retained everything with 100% accuracy or even understand it in that entire book. You have not. And the time period that we live in, knowledge is being, pro is being regressed. It's not progressing. It's actually going backwards. Okay? It's not progressing. You know, and we see that now. Most people have a misconception. Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh Hafidullah, he says in a beautiful muhadarat in a lecture he gave, he said that the army, the commoner during the time of Sheikh Islam and Taymiyyah, they knew the basics of their deen in detail. All right? Which in our time, someone knowing the basis of their deen in detail will be considered a scholar in our eyes or even a high proficient level student. What do I mean by knowing in detail? In other words, they knew the conditions of La ilaha illallah with its dalil. They knew the, the articles of Iman with its evidence. They can explain it to you. They understood those things. In our time, that's not the case. We don't know what Iman is linguistically, legislatively, or even according to tradition, if applicable, nor do we understand it with its proof or evidence so we don't have tafsil we have what we call mujmal we have that which is armed which is general concept of what iman is but not a detailed constructed concept of what is iman do you get the difference so knowledge is regressing as the prophet sallallahu talks about the sign of the hour that ignorance is going to be widespread this is why whenever you see abundance of killing that's because knowledge is not prevalent do you understand so we have to take in that consideration, especially during the time that we're in, that knowledge is regressing. So a person should not think that they can just learn something off the fly. Okay? He says, this is how you begin. Step by step. There's no rushing process in this. You don't have to rush to do anything. If you want to be eager and rush, then make sure you fully have it fully have taken root, you have embodied it, and you rush to do those good deeds which Allah Jalla wa Allah is pleased with. Do you understand? Be eager to pray. You want to rush to do something, be eager to pray. The Salat came in, be eager to offer wudu correctly, as the Prophet Sallam stressed this in many ahadiths, and then offer the wudu offer the wudu and then begin to prayer. Be eager for that. Be eager to carry out and be pleasing to Allah, but do not be eager to rest the process of knowledge. That's a big mistake that many of, including myself, I see it in my taliba. How come I am not here? How come we haven't graduated here? How come we always keep going back here? That's because this was never solidified. This was never strengthened. I never had a solid basics foundation that I that, that I was building upon. It was always wasn't well, it was always just bits and pieces here and there that I'm gluing together. I'm getting information here because it's not a systematic way of learning or approaching knowledge, and that becomes a problem. And the respect that you have to have for the dean is that everything begins with the foundation, and for us is the shahada. So that's why we're doing this course. It's called the Shahada School because we're going to take the an in depth analysis and study of just the shahada okay everything it entails for a year we're going to train ourselves we're going to begin to envelop and to love and to allow it to take root hopefully inshallah what is the shahada because this is our foundation he continues 
He says that the individual takes step by step in the preliminaries or the fundamentals of knowledge and his branches, thereby excelling step by step. Okay, he's taking that and he's going up. He's going from one stage to another. He says, فَهَذِي مُقْتَصَرَاتِ طَرِيقُ مُطَوَّلَاتِ فَلَا يُمْكِنُ أَن تُفْحَمَ مُطَوَّلَاتِ إِلَّا بَعْدَ فَحْمُ مُقْتَصَرَاتِ So pay attention now. This is something that we should keep in mind. He says, because by going the pathway or taking the approach to knowledge from the concise, small works is the path that's going to lead us to understanding the larger works, the larger volumes. We are not able to understand the larger works or the large volumes. You understand? If we do not go through the way of the concise way. Henceforth, it is permissible for you and I to memorize the Quran from Fatiha all the way down to Nas. We can start at Baqarah. There's nothing that say you can't. But is it afdal? Is it better that you start from Nas going on up? Because Nas is the smaller source. It gives you something to work with to begin to build yourself up to get to the larger surahs that have ahkam, that have hudud, that have term and, um, vocabulary that might be a little bit difficult for you to understand. So do you begin to, at that small process to build yourself up? It's a process. Okay? He continues. He says, this, meaning that a person will gradually begin to see himself or herself Elevating or excelling little by little. All right. Call of for this reason they say in regarding to the they say that this is in regard to the statement of Allah Jalla when he says in the Quran in the third chapter of the Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse seventy nine, Allah says, Walakin kunu Rabbaniin, however be the Rabbani. What is the Rabbani, brothers and sisters? We're gonna get into that. كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ كِتَابٍ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ All right. كُنْتُمْ You are those who have to uh, learned the book. وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ And you are those who learned يعني, of that which you have studied. The Rubbani, the ulama, they mention, Sheikh Uthaymeen, I mean Sheikh Salif Uzan, he says here, the Rubbaniin, there are those who begin with the smaller issues of knowledge. They approach knowledge from its proper channel. He's going to explain this. They begin with the smaller issues of knowledge before the bigger and larger issues of knowledge. They start at the very beginning. They're not teaching you Z, Y, X without teaching you A, B, C. Do you not get it? They're not teaching you Ya, yeah, Wow, all right, Ha, without teaching you Aleph, Ba, Ta. Do you understand? They're starting at the beginning level. We're not going to talk about fasting. Psalm. We're not going to talk about hajj. We're not going to talk about zakat. We're not going to even talk about salah. Without understanding the shahada. Do you get it? We start at the beginning level. To work our way up in stages. Not from the ending or a higher level. And, and, and work on our way backwards. That's not a Rabbani. So the Rabbani Yun is taken in consideration. Teaching knowledge according to what? Wisdom. And I'm going to give you another cherry that you're not even realizing. This is how the methodology of the Quran is. You have to look at it. Go back to the tafsir and see how Allah Jalla wa'ala approaches issues. And see how he starts by preparing the Muslims for whatever command or whatever prohibition he's getting ready to lay down. See how he begins to work with them. This is clear, right? And we learn this. Those stages is important. So he says that the Rabbaniin, that's what they do. Yurabbuna anfusuhum wa tulabuhum ibtida'a min masa'il al-sagheera ila masa'il kabira. They nurture themselves and their students by beginning with the smaller issues until they are able to excel to the larger issues. Wahada, the Sheikh continues. He says, Wahada Shay'un Tabari Tabiyari. 
This is a natural thing. So in other words, the Sheikh is saying that when you try to be all over the place and act like you're something you aren't, you know, that isn't natural. When you're learning in a different way that doesn't start with the beginning, that isn't natural. You know what I mean? It's natural that you begin <laughs> from the very beginning. لِأَنَّ كُلَ أَشْيَاءُ تَبْدَ مِنْ أُصُولِهَا وَأَسَاسَتِهَا ثُمَّ تَكَبُّرُ وَتَعَظْلَمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ He says because all things begin at its foundation level, at its fundamentals. Then it begins to grow. Then it begins to become enormous after that. But it had to have a beginning. It had to have an origin. It had to have a starting point. Do you get what I'm saying? A beginning process. Okay. فَأَمَّا الَّذِي يُ يَهْجُمُ عَلَى عِلْمٍ هُجُومًا مِنْ أَعْلَاهِ فَهَذَا يَتَعَبْ He says, as for the individual who tried to يَهْجُمُ عَلَى عِلْمٍ هُجُومًا He tried to يعني, measure or sizes the knowledge يعني, right, from its highest branches. That's how he tried to approach knowledge. I'm going to sound sophisticated. So I'm going to learn all the big words I can. I'm going to start studying issues of physics. I'm going to start studying the issues of this. And I haven't even begun with the preliminaries of uh, math. I haven't started the basics, subtractions, additions, even before I even got to <laughs> algebra and everything else. I, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to sound fly. And this is the type of society we live in. The age, as the early man mentioned, of ta'alum. You know what ta'alum, brother, sister, is? It's feigning knowledge. The age of feigning like you, you have something that you really don't. Acting as you possess something, but you really do not possess it. And it's seen, it's seen in the way, it's seen in our behavior, in the way that we approach circumstances or problems when they arise. That's how it's seen. It's not seen whether or not you can answer the question on the fly. So I want to start asking you this and then you be able to respond back. No, you probably could have memorized and paraphrased and know what to say exactly back. That don't mean you understood the issue. But when the problem presents itself to you and you don't know what to do and you're stuck and you're doing the opposite of what wisdom and knowledge mandates for you to do it shows clearly right there that you do not understand you have been feigning knowledge and all of us have a fair share of that we have been feigning knowledge we have been feigning that we understand the shahada we have and the proof of that the proof of that is how we behave that's the proof we can blame it on everything. Oh, maybe my mental health is not right. That's what people talk. You know, my, my mental state. I've been through so much trauma. I'm not able to grasp. We can blame it on whatever we want to blame it on. But the reality is, how did you approach Islam? Did you study in a systematic way? Did you allow the shahada to take root? And did it grow in br the branches that it needs so it can make you strong and firm upon your faith? And that your faith radiate from you, which is now shown throughout your character. But if we find that there is a barrier between our faith and what emanates from our character, if there is a block or a barrier between that, because see, the faith is that which you have with inside you, but what you project outwardly is from your character. And that only comes from what you have of faith. Do you get what I'm saying? So if you're not projecting that outwardly and it's not causing you to project it, there is a barrier. Somewhere along the line, something is blocked. So why is it not transforming you? That's the issue we always been having. You understand? That's the discussion we should be talking about. And that's the problem. That's the reason why we wanted to do this, inshallah ta'ala, this shahada school, so that we can probably fix that problem from its root. Let's understand the Shahada and say that we really do understand the Shahada. Let it take root and so that that way we can see the actions that comes from it. Last but not least, it's just a short page. He brings something to reiterate all of this to make it clear for us. He says, the individual is going to tire themselves out rigorously if they do this like this. They're not going to be able to achieve anything. He says, while the one who begins from the rudimentary level, the fundamentals, and then he excels from this, he is the one by the permission of Allah who is going to be made easy for him to traverse upon this sound and correct way. This is that person because he begins that way. And look what he's going to say, brothers and sisters. He said, Allah, Jalla wa'ala, he says in the Qur'an, in the second chapter of the Qur'an, which is Surah Baqarah, 
Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the verse 189, Yes, Aluna ahilla. They ask you, O Muhammad, about the crescent moons. Linnas. Say they are there to help state the time or fix stated time for mankind. وَلَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْ He says, وَنَنَاسْ uh, وَالْحَجْ And also for the time for Hajj, for the season and so forth. He says, وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ أَنْ تَأْتُ الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا And it is not from righteousness that you approaches the house or the doors from their ظُهُورِهَا وَلَكِنْ Meaning from their backs. Meaning, in other words, that you approach them from the back way. It's not considered to be righteous that you approaches the home or approaches the door here. In this case, because bab can mean door, it can mean avenue, depending on the context, it can mean home. All right. From their door, from their backward way. Okay. From the back way. It's not righteous that you do so. Well, I can not However, righteousness is for whoever have piety. Then the law says, no, approach the affair from its proper channels. Look what Sheikh they mean. I mean, Sheikh Fosan Fos is doing here. Look what he's doing. Everything he just mentioned. Look how he ties it into this verse. Subhanallah. Thing. Just pay attention. He says, He says here these individuals they asked the Prophet ﷺ about the crescent moons. They asked the Prophet ﷺ about the crescent. When did it be? When did the crescent begin small? Then it when it when did it enlarges uh, to the point that now it can complete? Then it goes small and return back to being just this crescent. All right. So Allah Jalla censored them for this. Allah censored them for this. All right, and He directed them to a question which would be a um, يعني, meaning that this question of theirs, يعني, from that which was beneficial to them, and yet to buyuta ilm by telling them no, approach knowledge from its proper affairs, its proper channels, its proper avenues. أما سؤاله عن الهلال وأحواله وصغيره وكبيره فهذا لا فائدة لهم فيه. So as for asking about the beginning stages or the process of the actual crescent and how it begins small, then we go large. He said, this doesn't have any benefit to you at all. You didn't create it. <laughs> Allah didn't see no need to even tell you about that. He didn't have to break down to you how it began and everything like that. That's, there's no fat either in you knowing that. What is the benefit in you knowing that? This is why it shows you that what? We should only look for those things that are beneficial. This also preserves your time. By the way, you waste your time when you're engaging in things that aren't beneficial. So you preserve your time by looking out for those things which are beneficial. This is why the wise individual, as the ulama, they mentioned the aql, the one who has the intelligent one, is the one who even weigh his or her silence. They're silent when it benefits them and they speak when it benefits them. I know I'm not at that level, but that's what they say. The intelligent individual weighs their silence. How many of us even weigh our silence? I'm not speaking right now because it doesn't benefit me to do so. <laughs> I'm talking right now because it benefits me to do so. <laughs> How many of us even look at look at it on that level? Most people just begin to chatter and chatter and chatter and chatter. You know, don't even care in regards to whether or not it's beneficial or not beneficial. That's just the reality. Okay, so he says here, he says, um, he says, Bal, the, the benefit to them is that they should have the benefit is that they should have asked about يعني, um, what they were in need of. Why is the crescent, what, is, what do you need from the crescents? And that is knowing the fawaid of uh, the, the benefits of the crescent. Well, he has a call. For this reason, Allah says, say to them, they are to mark fixed times for mankind. Allah clarifies to them its benefits. Their benefits of the crescents. Alright? He says, So Allah Jalla wa Ala, what he done here, he had made them time periods so that mankind can be able to know how to do acts of worship. Because there are certain certain acts of worship that are done at certain seasons and certain times. Like the Salat. Like Hajj. Which is done every year, right? How do we know to do that? How do we know what time period to do that? The crescent help us understand that, like Ramadan. 
Okay? Fasting when we cite the Hilal and breaking it when the Hilal is no longer what? For the Hilal, for the Shawwa. This becomes clear. This is how it's understood. He says, also like for Mu'amalat and for Ajal, for time period, for lifespans. This is what it is for. This is the benefit. Other than that, for Allah left for Wa'ad al So here Allah Jalla in this verse, He directed them towards the benefits of the crescent. Wala yujibhum an su'alihim an al-haqiqat al And He didn't answer them about the reality or the you know the reality of the crescent, like how they started, they mass and everything. Like the Sheikh said, because there was no benefit for them to even know that. Wala He says. Rather, he, he directed them towards that which is befitting for them to note or to ask concerning of. So the Sheikh, he says that we should approach knowledge from his proper channels. I wanted to bring that as an introduction before I go into the syllabus. Brothers and sisters, that's pretty much how we should be beginning to approach knowledge. We have to approach it from its proper channel. How do we know from its proper channel? For that which we are in need of. That which is a benefit to us. Not from that which isn't a benefit to us. Us knowing about this or knowing about that which just not, we are not in need of. Which is a clear sign. Or, and it's not a benefit. Then we don't need to actually go into those areas. We should focus on what we are in need of. Okay, Approaching from its uh, proper channel. So if for those of you who are invited to the group. You're going to see. The syllabus has been posted up. The PDF somehow, the link to it is not opening for some of you guys. Um, so what I did was I screenshot it and was able to post the actual um, the actual uh, syllabus up. So what you're going to have is you're going to see four intervals, all right? It's like a semester, okay? Really like a whole year. Because within interval one, for example, that is considered the beginning stage, all right? The beginner here is going to begin with phase one phase one consider the following all right so it's going to be three phases in one interval and what does i mean what what does the syllabus is saying meaning it's going to be three phases which equals up to three months and one interval which is one you understand which considers one semester all right it's going to be one yeah, and it's going to be three months that you're going to be covering, you understand, this particular um, material. Phase one, which will take a month, okay, you're going to cover the material of the Ahd. We're going to go over the covenant. It's definition, proofs, and rulings, okay? Also, you're going to cover the also, the foundation, its definition, and its importance. You're going to go over the Kelima, okay? It's definition, importance, and status. That's all going to be in the first month of the Shahada school. This is what the material you will be covering. This is what the syllabus is saying. All right. The second phase, which begins the second month, you're going to be going over the Shahada. It's definition, status, and ruling. Then you're going to be going over the Kelly Matang. The two statements, which is consistent, or which the Shahada consists of, is definition and proof. Then you're going to be going over the Asma, the names of the Shahada. Okay, this is the second month. All right. Now the third phase equals to the third month. Okay, which now you're going to be going over in that material. You're going to be dealing with the virtues of the Shahada. Okay. Then you're going to deal with the meaning of the first statement at Kalimatu Ula, the meaning of the first statement of the Shahada. Then you're going to deal with the meaning of the second state statement of the Shahada. Okay. Now you see pretty much what just happened here. You say, why didn't you teach all of that information at one time? Each individual, each, each need its own light, its own spotlight and its own you know, time so that you can properly allow it to take root. And this becomes a systematic way of learning. This provides for you a structure, not to be all over the place. You understand? All right. So that begins the first semester. Now, the second semester, brothers and sisters, begins with the intermediate level. The intermediate level now with the Shahada school is that you're going to go in phase one, which is the first month of the second semester. You're going to learn about Ar-Ruknain. 
Our Ruk name, brothers and sisters, is the two pillars to the Shahada. Okay? Then you're going to learn about Anafi. Okay? Negation. What does it mean? Is definition. Okay? The examples for it. Then you're going to learn about Al Thabat. Affirmation. Okay? It's proofs, it's examples, and so forth. And what does it mean? It's definition. Then in the second month of the second semester, you're going to learn about a sharat. What is a sharat? What is a condition? Okay, it's definition and ruling. Then you're going to learn about shurut, kalimatul ula, the conditions to the first statement. And then you're going to learn about the shurut thani, the conditions to the second statement. Okay, that's all in the second month of the second semester. Okay, in the third month, phase three. You're now going to begin to memorize. You're going to memorize the pillars, which is only two. You're going to memorize the conditions of the first statement, okay, which is only between seven to nine, okay? You're going to memorize the conditions to the second statement, which is only four. Some scholars add five, okay? This begins your intermediate stage in the Shahada school. Do you understand? Now you see what just taking place. The early Mali mentioned that there are five main things when we come in, when you study. The five main things when a person study is the first and foremost is that before all of this can be a success, it has to be based upon your niya. Your niya has to be pure khalis. Okay? You should intend by your way of studying to get closer to Allah, to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala. Your intention. All right? Then they mention, and they don't mention it in order. Okay, sometimes it's mentioned out of order, sometimes it's mentioned in order. So it's no particular order to it besides that the intention does come first. And everything else that I'm getting ready to mention doesn't have to come first. They mention listening, okay, writing, do you understand? Comprehending, memorizing. These are all the tools you're going to need when you begin to learn, okay? You're going to need these things or skills or tools, I like to call them tools, for you to begin to actually um, excel at that which you're trying to learn. All right. Again, your intentions. Okay. Your listening. Your um, your comprehending. Your memorizing. Okay. These are the things you're going to end your um, your writing. Okay, so writing and reading can actually be grouped together. Tayyip. Now moving on to the advanced stage of the Shahada. The advanced stage of Shahada, brothers and sisters, is the third month. What are we going to be covering in the third, I mean the third semester? What are we going to be covering in the third semester? In the first month of the third semester, you're going to now begin to go over the explanations of the Kalimata Tawheed. What does it mean? So I hope you catch what happened. And the first month, you're not going to be going over the explanation in the first semester. All right. It's important that you understand the system. Okay. All right. It's important you understand the system. You're not going to be boggled down with a lot of, I need this proof. I need this evidence. I need that. No, you're going to learn first the preliminaries. Then you're going to build upon those preliminaries. You understand? Before you start to get into what they actually mean and their proofs you have to memorize. So you're going to go over the explanation in the first month of the third semester of the Kelly Meta Tawheed. Then you're going to go over the explanation of the Shurut of the Kelly Meta Tawheed, the conditions of the Kelly Meta Tawheed. And then you're going to go over the explanation to the Shurut of the Kelly Meta Thani, the second statement within the, in, in, in the Shahada. Okay? So that's what you're going to be going over in the third semester. The fourth semester, which is the college level, okay, you're going to be going over the explanation of the requirements. What does the statement require? What does the jihada require? What, you understand what is expected of you from it? What is binding from you? Once you have taken this covenant, these are the things you're going to go over. You're going to go over in phase two, which is the second month of this is you're going to be going over a naqat min an nawaqat. You're going to be going over the invalidators. What caused this statement to be invalidated? Okay. 
what harms this statement, what causes it to be invalidated. And this is how we're going to approach this whole entire syllabus, brothers and sisters. Taking our time, you know, step by step until we're able to build something off of it. You should not be a point that you and I cannot explain the Shahada generally and in detail. And a lot of us can't explain the Shahada generally and in detail. Do you understand? We might can explain it generally in some sense, but we don't know how to explain it in detail. And what I mean by detail, brothers and sisters, I mean explaining it like a scholar will explain it. You understand? There's a beautiful book that we will be going over inside this course from an answer. It was actually put together. It was actually a risala. It was a treatise that was put together from a a uh, answer that was provided by Sheikh Muhammad Wahab, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, asked about the meaning of the Shahada. Someone asked him to explain what is the meaning of the Shahada. And it was a scholarly response that it became. They put it into a book form, a risala. How he explained, and he didn't just explain it, oh, is this kada or kada? No, he brought proofs, evidence, etc., etc. Same thing you find out Ibn Uqayyim. He's writing down that beautiful book. Four volumes, brothers and sisters, traveling. No book, no paper, no nothing with him. He can just break down, all the way down to the utensils that the Prophet had, his cooking pots, the name of his slaves, the name. Many of us don't even, I don't even, do you even know how many horses the Prophet had? His camels, do you even know their name? What utensils did he have? How many of us know this information? The scholars who actually studied the works of Ibn Uqayyim in this particular book, yeah, and he, afterwards they said that he. He, he, he have made 90 to 98% of it was correct. And this was coming from his memory. Knowledge is the ulama they mentioned is something that you cannot, yani, you should be able to go inside the qala with. You should be able to go into the toilet with knowledge. In other words, it's in your breasts. We're not that solidified. So stop. We, got, we have to stop. We have to empty our cup. We have to realize that no, we are in need of learning. Okay? All of us. If you are still at the stage where you are celebrating festi festivals or your birthday or anything of these natures or doing things like that, then I am not here to blast you out. That's not the point. But you are in need of really understanding the Shahada. Everything that you pretty much need to know, why you do this or why you don't do this, is going to be contained in your understanding of the Shahada. So this is why we say invite everyone, brothers and sisters, to the Shahada school. Okay, I don't care if you've been Muslim 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. You need to go over the Shahada, the Muslim, you know, the Shahada school, inshallah ta'ala, where we do a thorough analysis and tort. And there are many, many books already out there on the Shahada front and back. All I did is just put it in a curriculum for you guys so that we can learn from it. Okay, um, whatever we said that was incorrect, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully we gained some information today. Uh, pertaining to this course, I'm eager, I'm excited. It starts on February the 1st, by the permission of Allah, and it starts at 12 o'clock. You can learn it at your leisure, but you will have accountability in this course. Just because the syllabus doesn't mention exams, it will be exams, okay? You're going to have exams. There will be questions that's going to ask. We have to test your comprehension of the material you're going over. Okay, so that's important that you understand. So you're going to be required to study. It's not going to be one of those programs you're just listening. No, you got to study, brothers and sisters. We all have to study. So once you begin to study, you begin to learn. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. It will be at 12 o'clock and it will only take place once a week. Hopefully, we're able to cover in that hour some issues. And as it progresses to the second semester or the third semester, then we will move the time up because then we're going to be covering more and more information, which will now need us to add more time. OK, but in the beginning stages, it's going to, going to be a less time. It's not going to be so much overwhelming. So the person who is at work, the class will have, you know, the recordings will be inside there. If you're in the group, you can always go back to rewind the, the recordings and so forth. And the, 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 um, the exams will be up there. If you didn't do the exam at the time that there will be a time, um, there will be deadlines for the exam to be returned then. But still, what I want you guys to do is that if you are at work and you can't return it in at a timely manner, still do it. OK, and then still send it to me, still send it to me that you did the exam. Let me know that you're pretty much benefiting from the material, inshallah. 
we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place this on our scales and to allow all of us to benefit and to learn the shahada and what it entails inshallah ta'ala like the sahabas understood it and so that we can practice our deen whatever we said that was incorrect today it was from ourselves the shaitan whatever we said is correct from Allah jalla wa'ala subhanakallah wa bihamdi ash hadu wa la ilaha anta astaghfiruka 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 wa la ilaha anta ast